Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome everybody to the May 11th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As you may be aware, as you join the call, two things that we have to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy. Uh, so there are obviously some competing companies on this call. So we need to make sure that we're not participating in any activities that would be prohibited under any of the laws uh, for antitrust and competition. So the second one is our code of conduct. Obviously, everybody is welcome on the call, but we do need to abide by our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. And as far as announcements go, we have the standard um, Dev Weekly developer newsletters that go out each Friday. If you have anything that you would like to reach the hundreds of Hyperledger developers who subscribe to that newsletter, please do leave a comment in the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. And uh, I'm not sure who added the second one. Is that you, Rai? Yeah. Um, so uh, for meetings of, uh, for meetings that affect the governance of the project, it has been mandated that we switch um, later this month to using PCC. So further details will be coming, but uh, just be aware that by the end of May, we will be switching over to PCC to manage the TOC meeting as it is one of the meetings that is part of the governance of the Hyperledger Foundation and all of its projects. That's pretty much it. And Rai, for those of us who do not know, what is PCC? That is the Project Control Center, sorry. Um, so Project Control Center is a thing that uh, the Linux Foundation has developed. The benefit that we will get is attendance will be recorded and recordings will automatically show up where they're supposed to, so I'm told. And uh, you will get a personalized invite so that you as a member of the TOC, uh, your attendance is automatically recorded. Uh, furthermore, we will have a public link that uh, you know, we'll not have an individual invite, but uh, we'll be public. All right, thanks, Ry. Any other announcements that anybody has that they would like to make? Okay, no other announcements. So then we have uh, the quarterly reports. Uh, so there still is the indie areas and on-cred reports that are out there that came in last week. Um, it looks like a good number of us have reviewed those. Um, but the Aroha report did come in this week and I uh, didn't see any specific comments coming back on that, but wanted to open it up to see if there's any questions or comments on the Aroha report. Yeah, Victor. Uh, so I've resolved the current questions and I'm able to address any if there are. It would be nice if uh, people who actually commented and did re review. Thank you. All right. Thanks for that, Victor. And thanks for doing the updates as requested. Any comments or questions for the Aroha? report. No, if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, please do that. Um, and if you have had a uh, chance to look at it and ask for some changes, please take another look at that and make sure that the changes are as you request it. And also, if you haven't yet had a chance to look at the other reports that are still out there, um, please do do that. All right, um, so the next one is the Hyperledger Sawtooth report. I did see, Arun, that you had reached out to them on the chat channels and got a response back uh, that they are working on it and I think should be done by the end of this week uh, to submit that. Is that correct, Arun? Should have been put up by now. I will refollow. Hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, so there, there is at least some comments and, and work being done on that report. So we should expect to see that here shortly. Um, so hopefully we'll have that on the agenda for people to review next week. Also next week, we do have the Bevel report that is coming due. Uh, so we will look forward to seeing that one as well. All right, so for discussion items today, we have two discussion items. We have a demo of the Insights version three project health dashboard. Um, and we also have the task force discussion. Dave has done some great work to hopefully close that one out. Um, and so we'll take a look at what he's done and uh, work through that. But I would like to, at this point, hand it off to the Insights team so that they can give us a demo of the V3 Project Health Dashboard. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tracy. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning and good evening. This is Chaitan, and I'm one of the product managers at the Linux Foundation, and I am the product manager for LFX Insights. Uh, so if you are new to LFX Insights, basically it's a dashboard, a product that provides you the health of the uh, a Linux Foundation open source project. It has a variety of metrics from various data sources. Uh, what we have right now is the Insights version 2, and we are building the next version of Insights, uh, which is Insights uh, version 3. So let me quickly share my screen. Yeah. So uh, I'm specifically here today to gather your feedback, uh, basically uh, uh, on the uh, project health summary dashboard that we are building. Uh, obviously, the purpose of this conversation is to validate, have your feedback on the wireframe, right? And that is intended to be displayed on LFX Insights. The problem that we are trying to solve with this wireframe is, how do I find out if my project is healthy? And the personas whom we are aiming to solve this problem uh, is for project maintainers, project technical leads, OSPOs, and executive directors. Uh, please note, like, you know, these aren't really final designs. What you see is a low fidelity wireframe uh, designed for validation, feedback, and subsequent iterations. Um, I'll quickly uh, say some of the questions that we have, and we were looking for your perspectives. I would really be grateful uh, for your perspectives on, uh, like, you know, who on your team looks after the project health, right? How do you mon monitor the project health today? Uh, you know, what according to you comprises the health of an open source project? Like what KPIs do you first look at at the project health, right? And when do you feel the necessity to find out about the health of your open source project, right? And what do you do next when you view the health of your open source project, right? So with these questions in mind, I'll quickly jump over to the wireframe. Again, a disclaimer, uh, it's a very, very early version of a wireframe. Uh, it's specifically intended or designed to get your feedback. So that said, here I am. So uh, yes, so this is uh, the landing page or this is what we envision to be the landing page. Uh, obviously, uh, when you land here, you have the option to search for your open source project and you know your recent searches would, would uh, appear here. Uh, you have a whole lot of filters where you can filter the open source projects by, you know, alphabetically or, you know, by technology sector or, you know, by the contributing companies or the foundations under, under which each the projects belong to, right? But the most important thing here are these cards here, right? What you see here is, uh, you know, again, this is not, uh, this is just a wireframe. So uh, what you see here is a card that shows a project, in this case, Kubernetes. It has a description of your project. Uh, it shows the various contributors. The first high-level metric that you look at is your contributors, commits, pull requests, and a Kokomo, Kokomo metric, which is essentially a calculation that how much does it relatively cost to build an open source project based on the Kokomo model. Uh, you have these two tabs here, which shows your project health. Uh, project health comprises of your velocity, productivity, and stability. Uh, velocity is a set of about 16 metrics that we have, uh, maybe not a scope for today's conversation. I would love to have a conversation with each of you uh, in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, setting and uh, show you exactly what we mean by velocity. Uh, but let's say for the sake of this conversation, velocity is how fast uh, uh, you know, code is being written in, in your project, right? How fast uh, things are moving in your project. Uh, productivity is how much is, you know, kind of rel nearly similar. Productivity is a set of about 45 different uh, criteria that says, okay, how much is being done in productivity uh, you know, in, in, your, in your open source community? And then stability is how stable is your open source project? So imagine you, know, you being the user landing on the open source, uh, landing on the uh, LFX Insights page, 
where you see this card, you see, okay, project health. Um, you also have this best practices score, which is your essentially your open SSF best practices score, or, you know, maybe the Clo monitor score as well. So my question here is, right, uh, when you uh, land on insights or maybe, you know, any other tool that you may be using, what do you look for, right? When you uh, look for the health of the open source project? Yeah, so maybe maybe I'll start and then we can see who else uh, would like to raise their hands on this. But we've done actually quite a bit of work on project health within the Hyperledger Foundation, specifically in the TOC. Uh, we started a while ago, uh, I think when I was still with the Linux Foundation, where we developed a, a tool within the uh, within our labs space to look at project reports and the project health. Uh, and there's some documentation that we have in that lab about the sorts of things that we thought was interesting. And then last year, uh, Jim led a project health task force where we basically documented a, a number of different criteria for looking at project health and what are the sorts of things that we would be interested in taking a look at. So I think we'd be happy to share both of those pieces of information with you. Um, but really, you know, the the TOC is definitely interested in making sure that we're on top of where projects are and if there's any sort of help that they're going to need in order to increase their project health and, um, you know, or if there's anything that uh, we just need to be aware of as we look at each of the projects. So, um, Peter, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you, Tracy. Uh, just a quick one for me. The dashboard with these overview metrics looks great. I just wanted to add that in, in the final version, ideally, you would be able to click through this scores and then you right. would get a list of those metrics that yeah. that is comprised of. And then you would also get the specific uh, sort of formula behind those metrics so that if you really want to, you could recalculate them yourself manually. No one's ever going to do that, but uh, just for the sake of transparency of how the metrics come to be exactly is very important in my opinion. Got it. Yes, uh, definitely, Peter. What uh, the intent is, like this is the landing page where you would definitely be able to, uh, you know, look at the most important metrics related to the health of your open source project. And when you click on that, you know, it would take you to something like this. Again, this is just a wireframe that you're seeing here that gives you much more in, in depth, right, on all the criteria and the calculations that go behind what you see on that initial page there, actually. So... Uh, again, this may be not be a, a scope for today's conversation, but I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you if that's okay. And I'll walk you through the entire, you know, uh, set of wireframes that we have here. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if, if I may ask a follow-up question one more, is like, uh, how about the open SSF scorecard, right? Uh, or what is a good a score that you would like to look at that? Oh, okay. Uh, is it the uh, open SSF score or the CLO monitor scores that, you know, you would be interested in seeing when you land on the insights landing page? I would definitely love to have the open SSF score as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, another really important one that I immediately look at is a score related to the number of open vulnerabilities, maybe that's already baked into the open SSF score. So maybe we don't need a specific one, but just okay. security itself uh, is, uh, I think it's a really good one to have right up front. Got it. Okay, okay, okay. And typically when, you know, at what intervals do you look at the health of your open source project? Uh, is it like um, monthly, quarterly, or what What compels you to look at the health of the open source project? Is it some notification? How does that process look like? Well, for me, usually it's the quarterly report that triggers it, that, that's when I then reflect on it, take a look. 
it's not more frequently than that because as part of the maintainers of the project i'm usually just super busy and i kind of have a feel on how busy we are and i kind of have a feel on the health based on that just in terms of how many contributions did we get how busy i am with reviewing pull requests from uh contributors and then how many bugs we have how many times the ci has been broken uh things like that so to outside of the quarterly reports i usually just uh sort of have a feel for it just based on my own experience because i work on maintaining cacti 100 percent of the time okay okay that's wonderful to know thank you all right thanks Rezi. Um, so Chetan, I think maybe we will have more questions based on your explanation so far and on okay. the metrics that we are seeing and also some sure. of the expectations that we have been putting together okay. now, but I do have a quick couple of questions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my first question is, so these quarterly reports, we, in the earlier version, we kind of struggled to archive them or probably uh, get a sense of here is the quarterly report and then this view doesn't change even though you're like, so one of the things that we want is all the project reports, um, all the project teams to report this information in their quarterly report so that this can be um, collected and then seen uh, by others later point in time as well. Okay. So it would help if there is an archival button or it, if there is a, let's say a screen uh, capture kind of a feature that would allow us to take this and put it in our reports. Now the, um, Mm -hmm. You mean uh, you mean you would like to have this downloaded and maybe put it in a PowerPoint slide? Is that what what you mean uh, for a quarterly review? I mean, sure, we follow GitHub um, uh, PR for quarterly reviews, but yes, any means of attaching this over there. Sure, got it. Okay, sure, yeah. And uh, yes, that's definitely uh, being uh, you know considered as such. Uh, we have the option of, uh, say, for example, here, you know, to download these charts as a PNG or maybe as a CSV file. That's something that would that something uh, you be interested in? Is that something that you're looking for, actually? Sure. Uh, maybe at the collective level, uh, the collective not instead level. of. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Yes, at the collective level as well. Yes, that's what I meant as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense. So um, other thing, I think the thing that you were asking also, right, regarded to how often are we monitoring these projects health? So there have been talks on, on this topic and then how often should we monitor? We want to move towards an approach where uh, some of the things which can be objectively measured, we want to have a real-time visibility into those. And it's mm -hmm. not to, it, it it's also kind of for us to know if a particular project is, um, continuously having um, let's say some attention that is needed right so um, we want to be very active in in that space so create those alerts and this could be through any means right we have not explored that yet but uh, we do have let's say the health metrics that we have been capturing um, and mm -hmm. of course we can share that uh, on discord after this meeting sure um, be so thing. those objective metrics we would like to have alerts uh, for those things if possible okay yeah sure okay and how have you historically been capturing these health metrics right what tools have you or alternatives you've been using um so i know for last three years right so um before moving into lfx insights the reports used to be written by the project maintainers mm -hmm. um and those uh, information were completely composed by the project maintainers themselves. They used to aggregate information through different sources and they used to put it over there in the report. And yeah. after the LSF, LFX insight, uh, the previous version that, that we have currently, right. it uh, those information were captured from the tool. Right? Uh, so there are views that the project team create and then that particular view link is put in the quarterly report. Okay, 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 cool. And one, one follow-up question to that, sorry, is what action do you take, right? When you uh, 
say maybe get an alert what action would you like to take or when you see this report what typically what are the uh, common actions that you take actually right um i'm just thinking how how diplomatic i can answer that but i'll try my best I'll, or I'll, I'll i'll just say right for instance uh, we had one of the project which we recently uh, voted for end of life and the project uh, team uh, suggests that we could have done a better job by moving the project to dormant and 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 yes, of course, I agree. Like I see why project team says that, um, and we could have done that better if we had real time visibility, and if there was an indicator, indication or an alert content constantly telling us, hey, there is something that needs your attention, and then it would allow us to like probably ask the maintainers, project maintainers, that hey, probably dormancy is the best approach for now. And then once the project was in dormant state, then we could have voted for it to be end of life. Yeah. Um, so this prompt, it, it this particular thing could have been purely objective based in the sense if we knew what kind of contributions were going on and then how often the PRs were raised and how long did it take for PRs to be merged. Got it. Those could have alerted us regarding this. Okay. Okay, sure, sure. This is wonderful feedback. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Even. Um, <clears throat> for feedback on this landing page, the thing that I'm struggling a bit with is trying to deal with the um, total statistics that you've got, like contributors commits versus the you know something like rolling numbers or trends. So something I would consider would be. Um, um, a toggle that sort of lets you see on that first um, both the you know the total for the project over its entire lifetime plus say a a rolling last quarter view um, that would let someone coming in or or even the project sort of see a, at least a little bit of a trend on it so that's one thing okay and then um, the other piece is we're at um, a bunch of us are up in Vancouver uh, in Canada right now at the Open Source Summit. There's a ton of uh, or a few sessions anyway that I've attended on um, actions that maintainers can take um, that were pretty good. A, just guidance for them, but also um, actions that can be taken in response to metrics adjustments and things like that. So I think um, it, linking this to actions um, would be a valuable thing. So um, templates for doing things, um, ideas for, you know, building up contributors or whatever. I think that's, you know, static content, but bringing the content to be accessible from where the metrics are would be, a, I, I think, an interesting approach. Got it. Okay. Okay. And help me understand. Uh, you said that you would like to have like a, a rolling view. One is the total view, uh, which let's say, for example, in this, it, uh, yeah. you see this like, you know, 35K contributors over the lifetime of this project, but you said you would exactly. love to see a quarterly view as well. Right. And how, how would you uh, use that data uh, quarterly uh, versus maybe? Uh, so, so my thought is not, Oh, that's cool. That, um, Project's really big, but if I'm looking at, you know, the COBOL project, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's going to have numbers like this because it's 50 years old. And um, but what I want to know is how much is COBOL being used in the last year? <laughs> so that's what I mean by that. So, you know, being able to just quickly toggle, you know, have a button near where that contributors commits PRs is to say, um, past year um, would be, I think, uh, a, a useful mm -hmm. one. Think of it the same way that, you know, when you go look at an open source project, the first thing you do is look at um, sort of how many forks there are, that's sort of the absolute. And then you look at when was the last commit made? Oh, it was made for the last, you know, it was made two years ago. Okay, I don't, I don't I, you know, I don't want to look at that. So it's it's kind of that two, the, the first two thing, two things you do when you look at a project. Um, and then okay. 
containers themselves these links off to say, okay, how can you build up these numbers? That was the combination of the summary of what my comments were. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. And Dave? Hi. Um, could you click over to that best practices tab that you were on before? Yes. Uh, yes. Right there. Fine. Yes. Yeah. So we currently have a best practices task force going on so this is apropos today um mm -hmm. but we i mean maybe we can do this offline but i wanted to understand further the criteria for like for each of these four areas is this actually part of the open ssf scorecard or is this something else like the, the documentation legal best practices and security scores here yeah sure so we've the idea we've mocked up to uh two different variations here one is the best practices score that we have from clo monitor and the other criticality score that you see here that's the open SSF score. Uh, Clo Monitor has a set of criteria, uh, for example, uh, documentation, licenses, best practices, uh, security, and legal. And within that, you know, they have mentioned what exactly is covered under documentation. What are the uh, criteria that you need to have, you know, satisfied for documentation? Likewise, for licenses, you know, whether it's approved licensing, uh, license scanning, then you have certain best practices. So these are the criteria that we are taking from Clo Monitor, but again, you know, this is we have just mocked it up, which means that you know we want to know which of these uh, projects prefer, right? Whether it's the Clo Monitor score or whether it's the Open SSF score here. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I can look at both of those offline and maybe give you some feedback later. Yes, yeah, sure, Andy. I, I would love to connect with you as well. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I see one chat comment. Uh, contributor is contributor di diversity a major factor in the stability category? Yes, uh, definitely, Hart. Uh, it is one of the major uh, factors in the stability category. Yes, contributor diversity. Um, it's uh, basically we are trying to calculate how uh, how many contributors make up fifty percent or more of your total contributions. Uh, does that sound right, Hart? Like, uh, does the definition uh, sound right? Is that what you were looking for? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thanks for explaining. Uh, I do sort of like a, a min entropy based definition of contributor or diversity and stability. Uh, and that sounds like what you're going for. So, yes, yes. Uh, if I can quickly show up. The... Yeah, I think I don't have it here right now, but yes, uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll set up a conversation with you and I'll walk you through the exact, uh, you know, uh, designs for stability. I think I have it here. I do not know. Let me have, take a quick look. Oh, cool. I have it here. Uh, yeah, your contributor dependency. So, you know, if, if it says, okay, six contributors are responsible for over 50% of your contributions as and the remaining 264 contributors are doing the other uh, half of the contributions. And can you tie these contributors to organizations like we can on the existing insights? That was exactly what I was gonna ask. <laughs> okay, uh, how, uh, okay. Yes, I think we can, but um, you know, I'll, I'll have to, you know, I would I perhaps not like to confirm it on this call, but that's something which you know I'll, I'll a feedback taken. I'll have to get back, get back to you during a conversation. Actually, yeah. Okay. Thanks. As as Dave insinuates here, if we have six contributors that are all from the same company that are responsible for fifty percent of code contributions, that's mm -hmm. much potentially more dangerous than six contributors that work for six separate companies. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Yep. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah. That's that's very nice to know. Yeah. And on that particular one, I think with our project reports, what we were looking at was uh, the people. Basically, twenty percent of contributors contribute eighty percent of the code is what it typically ended up being, um, mm -hmm. which is you know that eighty twenty rule. Um, sure. So you know, I don't know if fifty percent is the right number there, and so just you know, keep that in mind as you're, you're working on that. Got it. Okay, sure, sure, Tracy. Actually, uh, you know, maybe not the first version. Eventually, uh, we have the plan where, you know, we would allow users to adjust the weights or, you know, we've been discussing about it, I would say. And you could see that in, in the future versions where you could adjust the weights that you want to apply to any metric or how you calculate the metric. So maybe that could be a possibility in the future. 
Okay, great. Jim? Thanks, Tracy. Uh, sorry, I joined late, so I apologize if this has been asked before. Um, do you guys take into account of the what we call uh, what we were, uh, were having the health data task force, the usefulness of the code? Um, a project can be really active, but if they're not being adopted, then that should be an important indicator. Uh, for example, downloads of the release binaries or polls from the Docker registry. Um, okay. are, are those accounted anywhere in here? Uh, not on this uh, landing page as such. Thank you, Jim, for the feedback. Not on this landing page as such, uh, but that is something that we were considering in the stability page, which is your downloads here. Uh, you know, based on, you know, the pulls or, you know, the downloads as such. So, um, in other words, it's not, it's not factored into the overall project health at this moment. Yes, uh, but yes, again, uh, you know, I was keen to gather the feedback and if that's the, uh, that's an important metric, then yeah. definitely that's something we would uh, love to consider as such. Yes, yeah. Okay, great. So and that again, is one that Tracy, we would like to look at, right? Yeah, as Tracy mentioned, we had a we built a matrix of uh, different categories and different data points that can be collected for project health uh, mm -hmm. from as a result of the, um, the project health task force that we're really happy to share with you guys. In fact, we uh, last year we shared with the team. Um, might have been someone else, but. Um, yeah, we can share yeah. share that with sure, you. Sure, that would be wonderful, Jim. Yeah, if you could share that report with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And Rama. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering, and maybe the other folks on TOC can comment uh, on the uh, uh, contributed diversity. Uh, should we also take into account the people who are uh, reviewing and approving PRs? I mean, do we need more diversity there as well? You uh, I mean, we want to know if like the same, same people are reviewing like most of the PRs, right? Okay. Yes, I think uh, the intent there was, you know, to have an ability to select which metrics you're, uh, you know, uh, looking at the contributor dependency on. So definitely, yes, you know, you would have, uh, you know, uh, based on pull requests or your commits or issues or contributions, which is an, you know, uh, aggregation of commits, issues and pull requests as such. Yeah, no, I agree that the code contributions is the main thing to watch out for, but I just wondered if uh, the PR approvals also should be uh, uh, there somewhere. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Got it, good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, looks like I'll be a little mindful of your time. Um, if, uh, you know, I would uh, thank you for your feedback, first of all, and thank you for having me on this call, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, and uh, if I could, uh, you know, set up a one-on-one -on -one call with you, uh, if you could just put a plus one on the uh, chat, you know, I would make sure that I'll reach out to you and I'll set up a conversation, uh, you know, at a date and time that's most convenient to you, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's um, all that so I had. Chaitan, I think the chat is disabled on Zoom. So maybe how about okay. we give a thumbs up as an emoji or maybe raise our yes. hands, one of those. Yes, sure. That would be wonderful. Yes, uh, sure. Uh, yes, uh, if uh, if we could do that, that would be wonderful. You know, thumbs up on, on your... Uh, this one I'll reach out to you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tracy, uh, Peter, Arun, uh, Stephen, Jim, Andy, uh, Rama, and everyone for your feedback. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for bringing this to us. And as you can tell, we're obviously very passionate about Project Health at Hyperledger. So um, I think you've got a good set of people who uh, can definitely help you with the work that we've done and uh, helping to move this forward. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, Dave, I think it's off to you for project best practices. Excellent. Okay, let me share. Uh, 
Okay, so I think we are um, close to closing this one out as far as what I was hoping to achieve for this task force. Um, like I said at the beginning, this was never meant to be a boil the ocean thing. It was meant to be more of a survey uh, of both existing practices and then uh, identifying gaps and trying to plug some of those gaps where we could and uh, deferring to other task forces where we couldn't do that. So I do have two pull requests out there now, one around the project best practices, and then one around the GitHub contribution guide. This was um, basically it came from Fabric that, that we pointed people to, and we realized that this was more universally applicable to all the projects, I think. Uh, I think Peter has kind of risen to our subject matter expert level for uh, for Git and GitHub. So I would definitely like um, Peter's review of this one and anybody else, of course. Um, so like I said, there's two pull requests out there. Uh, I don't think we need to actually go into the content here in the meeting um, because we've already done that for the most part. It's mostly just um, a, you know minor edits on what we've gone gone over in the meetings. I did have a few specific questions on some of the open items. Let me go to, actually I can do it from the conversation page. So I went ahead and tagged a, a few of you where I thought you could help. Uh, one was about the community specification license. I think Hart, you were gonna talk to legal in terms of um, what we want to say about using this. I don't know if you've heard anything back from legal yet or if you need to get with them still. Um, yeah. I still need to, sorry, I still need to talk to legal about this, uh, but I believe that should be fine. Okay, so I've got this out there as a reminder to you. Um, Rai, I tried to capture um, the branch protection rules the things that we should that practice that projects should configure um, in that in those settings in GitHub. So you might want to double check and make sure I captured all the ones that you thought were important. You don't we don't, like I say we don't have to do that right now, but you can go off and check that afterwards. Uh, let's see, Peter. So I think it was you that was commenting about the um, preserving the commit hash. Was that correct? Was that you, Peter? So yep, I think I was talking about a hash. Yeah, I think this one will probably sit more applicable to the GitHub contribution guide. Um, I didn't know exactly how to work that into the process. So if you could um, take a look at this and think about where that makes the most sense, and then we can switch that over to the contribution guide. Okay, I can go through it and find a place, a section to to put it, and then I can add the paragraph to explain it. Yeah, like I didn't know if it was when you're initially doing the commit or when you're updating a commit. So um, you can think about the best placement for that. Okay. Um, the only other question that was out there was around the use of GitHub um, packages for Docker image storage. Um, we were a little bit concerned about the billing for that. I think what we had said last time was GitHub was not enforcing the limits yet, but if they do, we'd be in trouble. So I put this one to ride. I don't know if we have any more um, insight into whether this might become an issue if we start hosting multiple images there, especially if we start hosting like pre-release images like nightly builds there. Um, so I talked today or yesterday um, with a JFrog competitor and they had uh, very nice things to say about their ability to do this. Um, so this may end up being a uh, uh, something that's published to the startup. I'm going to talk to them, um, but uh, let's just not worry about that right now. Okay, we can put that in the back burner. I mean, we in Fabric we do use uh, JFrog for our nightly images, and that's worked out pretty well. We were hoping to have something more integrated into GitHub, but yeah, me too. Um, the people that I talked to promised all kinds of great integration. Um, I'm that's a research project for me. Uh, I would just keep using uh, uh, GitHub to store Docker images that you're using for CI and stuff because of locality, and uh, the JFrog issue will be TBD. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's it. I think. 
since it's now in a pull request, I think you can all go off on your own time and see if you've got any final uh, words of wisdom to add to the best practices or to the or to the contribution guide. But are there any other comments right now? You might want to pay pay particular attention to the introduction of both. Make sure I kind of positioning these correctly. Like I say, we, this is a survey of existing guidelines and practices and then dives deeper into other areas. So the first few sections are pointers to existing content. Um, and same with the contribution guide. I want to make sure I couch that the right way, saying there's plenty of guides out there, but uh, this one includes kind of the full set, end-to-end -end set of contribution steps, including uh, what, like the generally accepted practices from Hyperledger projects. So make sure, um, be good to make sure we're in alignment in terms of, don't want to say anything that's not a good practice on another project. So be good to see some insights from other projects as well. Peter? Nothing specific as feedback, just that overall, I think it's great. And uh, thank you for doing it. Sure thing. This was um, one of the one one of the things as a maintainer that I wanted uh, to get out of the TOC. And when I, when I became a TOC member, it became an obvious thing that I could contribute back. So looking forward to all of your uh, final reviews on these. All right, thanks for that, Dave. Um, appreciate all the hard work that you've put into this and getting us to this stage. I think it's looking great. Um, any other topics that anybody would like to bring up today or discuss on the meeting today? Victor? Thank you. Uh, I actually have a couple topics. First of all, uh, we have we have requests for comments regarding Eroha project. Uh, it's uh, called Promote Eroha Runtime Validator into Eroha Runtime Executor. So I can post the link in Zoom. If somebody could give me the right to do that, it would be nice because uh, I'd like to do that now. And I think discussing it at some point would be useful. And any comments will be welcomed for that part. Yeah, Victor, on that particular topic, we do use Discord. We have a TOC channel and specifically a, a thread for this particular meeting. So um, if you wouldn't mind putting it in the Discord, Absolutely. then One moment. people can I, take, a, I, take a look there. One moment. So let me find it. I will do yep. that in a moment. Uh, one second. I did just turn on your ability to talk to co co hosts and co-hosts. So you can send you know post in uh, but just, which category is toc if you don't mind uh, um it's at the it's at the very top it says technical oversight committee uh thank you very much <clears throat> so thank you uh i will post it right now uh this is the first one and any comments on this topic are welcome because I think it's going to influence a lot in how Iroha behaves. There is uh, yet another part. I find it uh, quite important and it would be related to the mentorship project. I have sent a letter to Min Yu and I would like to actually discuss this uh, here if it's possible. Um, because I think uh, the process could be improved significantly in the terms of UX. So first of all, uh, most of the mentees contacted directly our tick lead instead of uh, contacting us at some point. So I think we could somehow re reorganize the rules and reorganize the interface so they know how to proceed correctly. Um, Besides that, uh, the LFX platform has some limit because we don't really see the information from our mentees. For example, there is one person who will be working on the DSL project 
and I ensured that this person applied correctly. Uh, he did tell me everything went well, and right after, when I check the LFX platform, I don't see him as an applicant. Uh, this does not allow our team to plan how to proceed because we don't see who and uh, when applied. And I feel like it's quite important to see these details uh, before everything goes ahead. I know it's not the accepted applicants, but I feel like it's going to help a lot. Um, so far, does this sound reasonable? Uh, so I think both of those sound reasonable. However, I don't think this is the group that can make any changes to the LFX platform for mentorship. Um, so I think we need to, to find the right contact for you uh, okay. to, to suggest these changes. So Rai Hart, I don't know, is there somebody at the Linux Foundation or is there a, maybe Chetan, um, do, do you know who we should contact about the, the mentorship um, piece? Yes. Uh, certainly, I can, uh, you know, contact the right persons because I am in touch, regular touch with the team. In fact, I used to do mentorship before and I just recently transitioned to a team member. So I can speak. So we need to change the descriptions of the mentorship program. Is that right? Uh, not only the description, we actually need to change the LFX code in the terms of UX a bit. Because right now we don't see who actually applied, who did not and uh, this uh, makes it unclear who we need to guide and who we don't need to guide to even apply. Uh, we don't know how many people applied for each project uh, in the interval before applications uh, start and the hyperledger actually picked uh, someone so this is a bit concerning. Got it. Yeah, I'm not able to make a decision on the uh, roadmap for LFX uh, mentorship but Victor, what I could do is, uh, can I set up a call with you? And uh, we could definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, have some kind of a demo for you on how uh, or what is planned maybe, or, you know, what is currently in, in the feature set for, for LFX mentorship. I will copy the contact uh, both in Discord and sure. uh, I will copy the contact here uh, for your convenience. Please assign a meeting. Uh, yes, I will reach out to you, Victor. Yes, I'll reach out to you by email. Okay. Yeah. Alexander, do you have some other comments regarding this situation or not really? Um, other than the uh, um, mishap with the uh, email routing, which I've mentioned to Ray personally, and Sean, um, nothing else. Um, we do have some concerns related to um, maintainer diversity, but we realistically don't see any way of improving it right now. Um, and it shouldn't be a concern given that it is actively developed. We have no plans of abandoning it. And yeah, not much else from our side. Okay, anything else? Any other topics that anybody would like to bring up today? All right, if not, then I will let you go and we will talk again next week. Next week, I think we're back to the security. I think we're trying to close that one out. Um, is that correct, Arun? That we, you wanted one more time uh, for talking through the security task force? Yes, Tracy. And um, that won't be long, but I request everyone to review the doc and then we could make a motion on the doc if by next week. Okay, sounds great. And then uh, we'll go back to Bobby the following week. And then I think we've got two new task forces that uh, you guys talked about last week for us to start. And so we'll make sure to get those on the agenda uh, as we continue moving forward. So we will again see you next week and uh, have a great week. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.